Tracy, it is not a mandate. It is a recommendation that companies abide by the guidance. There's nothing that says you have to do it other than common sense and an effort to keep your company from being so sued for securities fraud. Because we're talking now about disclosures. We're not talking about privacy laws. These are public disclosures. Public disclosures by public companies to shareholders about their risks and exposures and innumerable other things that the subsequent slides will talk about. Uh, you have to talk about, as Jake said, the incidents. You have to talk about prior incidents, potential future incidents. You have to talk about security procedures. And one of the most important things you have to talk about, if you, Tracy, can go to the next slide. The adequacy of cybersecurity preventative measures and relevant insurance held by the company. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read that last part again for people who are not paying attention. Relevant insurance held by the company. If you're a public company, the suggestion, and I would go so far as to say not just a suggestion, the best practice mandate is you'd better have insurance. And I've got here a room full of underwriters and brokers, some lawyers and some vendors, but the underwriters and the brokers should be handing this to every single one of their public company policyholders and private company policyholders. You all should pub republish this with your brand of your law, of your um, insurance company or your law firm and hand it to all your clients. It's a great PR thing to tell your clients what they need and how you can provide the services to them. If you are a private company and you are a contract partner, you deal with a public company which has these disclosure obligations, your public company partner is gonna need you, their private company partner, to tell them about your exposures and risks and whatnot because it may be material to your own evaluation of your own business and your disclosures. So, for example, if I am a public company and I put out an RFP and I send one over here and one over here, the one over here is a public company and tells me all the stuff I need to know. The one over here is a private company and says, I don't have to do it because I'm not a public company. Who am I gonna deal with? I'm gonna deal with the public company. Even if they're $100,000 more, I'm gonna deal with the public company because if there's a mistake or a problem with this one, the $100,000 is gone in half a second flat in my defense or my internal investigation or whatnot. So it is clearly relevant to public companies, private companies, every company. And it should be stressed, again, to the policyholders that whether you're mom and pop or whether you're Fortune 50, if you want to do business in a global economy, then you really need to do these assessments. Even if you're not doing the disclosures, you need to do the assessments because your current and future business partners are gonna require that information in order to make their own internal assessments and in turn make their SEC disclosures in compliance with the guidelines. And again, the guideline may be a best practice, but if something happens and you don't implement best practices and then you get sued, what are the plaintiff's lawyers going to say? The plaintiff's lawyers are going to say they didn't implement best practices. They were negligent. So it's not even that you didn't make, make the disclosures. You were negligent in not implementing best practices. And the SEC tells you what the best practices are.